On Saturday, May 9th, Fairfax County Public Schools will host its second annual community conversation on teen stress. Marianne Panarelli, Director of Intervention and Prevention Services at FCPS, is here with us today to fill us in on the details. Hi, Marianne. Hi, thanks so much for having me. We're glad to have you. First of all, why is this event so important and who should attend? This event is a wonderful event for parents, for teachers, for community members, and for most of all for students. Um, we call it a conversation on teen stress because we feel that's a very important conversation to have. While stress by itself does not cause any form of depression or anxiety or mental illness, it certainly can exasperate those things if they do exist. And so this gives us an opportunity to have an open conversation about that and to have an open conversation with students to destigmatize some of the fears that they have around um, concerns about mental illness. Okay. Well, we hear you have a great lineup of speakers and sessions, so definitely tell us more on that. We do, absolutely. It'll be May 9th and at Hayfield uh, Secondary School, and we're having Dr. Mark Brackett is coming from Yale University. Um, he's a specialist in social emotional learning and he will be talking about um, some social media, uh, some work he's been doing with Facebook around bullying and also around depression and suicide and how kids as they interact with Facebook and other social media can be positive forces um, to taking steps about those things. We're also having Dr. Um, Tracy Cross from William and Mary and his area of expertise is perfectionism mm. and how uh, parents and others can encourage kids to do their best without necessarily fostering a sense that everything must be perfect. Um, in addition to that, we will have two sessions where uh, individuals can choose what they would like to go to. We'll have multiple breakout sessions about a wide variety of topics. Fantastic. Now, will there be an opportunity to hear from students who may have successfully managed um, their issues with stress or other emotional issues? Because I'd imagine that that would really resonate with other kids as well as the parents. Right, absolutely. We've had students on the planning committee all oh, year fantastic. this year, um, and they have been quite vocal about what they think should be included in the workshops. Okay. Um, they have asked for our workshop where um, college admissions counselors uh, can speak to them about sort of demystifying the process and some things that may or may not be true but they believe to be true and that's increasing their stress. Um, in addition to that there will be workshops that the students will be the ones who will be speaking and sharing their lived experience um, with everything from how many AP classes they take mm -hmm. to um, their own experience that they have had with helping other kids who have struggled um, speaking up and taking action to make their whole class community, their whole school community a better place. Great. And in addition to the sessions and the speakers, what else can attendees expect? We have a wonderful exhibition hall, probably 50 exhibitors, everyone from nonprofit organizations to our community partners like the Community Services Board. Um, and the Hayfield Boosters will be offering lunch for, uh, to be purchased. Um, and we're, this year, one of the pieces of feedback we had from last year was that you could just go to lunch in the exhibit hall at any point, but that meant you were missing another session. Oh, okay. This year, we've blocked out a time for lunch and for uh, going through the exhibit hall. So nobody has to, to miss out on Nobody has to, to choose, but you can okay. certainly choose to spend more time in the exhibit hall if there's something there that piques your interest. Okay. And last year, I believe there were about a thousand people that there came. Were, yes. And so I wonder if there's any additional feedback or common themes that you may have heard from some well, of those. Well, we certainly heard that they very much appreciated the practical nature of the first keynote speaker. And so we've spoken to our keynote speakers this year and said that we would like them to give people information that they could walk away with okay. um, and put into effect immediately. In addition to that, we got some feedback around some of the sessions were overcrowded. There were so many sessions to choose from that people weren't exactly sure what to do. And so this year, we are giving people an opportunity to register ahead of time for specific sessions. That'll give us an opportunity to get into rooms that are big enough to accommodate everyone and also give uh, participants an opportunity to look at things ahead of time and kind of think about what mm -hmm. they might want to go to. Um, we've organized them into strands so that there's certain topics that you, if you have particular interest in that area, um, there'll be several opportunities to go to a workshop on something within that area. So we're hoping that those pieces of feedback have led to a better conference this year. 
Fantastic. And so the event is May 9th at Hayfield. Uh, what are the hours? It's going to, there's going to be an early session from 8.30 to 9.30 for those people. As I said, it's also open to teachers, and I did want to say that teachers can receive recertification credit for attending. Um, so there's a session from 8.30 to 9.30 uh, that will be a series of breakout sessions, and then the keynote is at 10, um, and then we will go through the day until about 2.30. Okay, and again, you mentioned that people should register for the event. Where would they go to, to do that? They can go to the Department of Special Services website, and we will, um, the registration should be live uh, right after spring break. Okay, all right. Well, thank you so much. We're really looking forward to attending the event. Well, thanks for having me. We look forward to having everyone come and join us. Fantastic.